everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at Power Query. Uh, in this uh, particular example, we're going to be looking at how we can merge two tables. So at the moment, you can see, well, we'll go through them. We've got two sheets, users and contact. In the users table, we've simply got a user ID, a name and a surname. And in the contact table, we've got that same user ID and then, but we've also got now some additional contact information for each one of those users. And what we want to be able to do is, uh, we'll start off with email, but we want to be able to pull through either one or multiple columns from this contact table and map them against each of our applicable users in this table. Uh, but we'll be creating uh, creating all this into a new table altogether. So you could say it somewhat resembles uh, the functionality that VLOOKUP gives us, uh, but we want to obviously, moving away from those uh, VLOOKUP functions, we can now see how we can do this in Power Query. And it's a, obviously a real strong function because like I mentioned just then, we we have the ability to pull through multiple fields. We could pull through every one of those fields in the contact table rather than just the one, um, again, as that example of why Power Query is better than uh, or more powerful than uh, VLOOKUP in that example. So we'll just jump straight in. If you haven't seen our previous video on Power Query, you might want to check that out uh, maybe after this video. Uh, but it's also worth mentioning that if you have little or no experience using Power Query, this video is still suitable for you uh, and you'll get a great idea of just how straightforward Power Query is to get the basics and then obviously you can then build upon them as well. And it's a real great tool for saving you time uh, when it comes to particularly repetitive or monotonous tasks. Uh, and yeah, that is, uh, that's my sales pitch on uh, Power Query. So let's jump straight in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go uh, click obviously where I am here and um, you can see in the user table. This isn't a complete applicable step. It's just uh, the way I uh, tend to do it. And I'm gonna navigate in our ribbon to the data tab, and then you can see we've got this optional from table range. So this is where we're gonna be opening up Power Query and telling it we want to absorb data from our users table. So I'll click that button. And you can see it's now loading up and we've now got uh, one query uh, query that has been created for us. So we can see we've got this user users query on the left hand side here. And we can also see that Power Query has um, built two applicable steps for this particular query. So the first one being source. So we can see where this uh, query or the data is coming from. And clearly we can see it's an Excel connection. It's coming from our current workbook and it's picking up an item named users. So we obviously know visually that we can see that information is stored in an actual table. But when it comes into Power Query, don't get confused. It's just referring to the name of that item, which is a table, but it's the name is obviously users. And you can see it was absorbing all of the content. And it's also added this change type step, what simply is uh, identified what it believes to be the best format for each of our fields. So depending on the data set you're using, you might want to play around with these. Uh, all, you can, all you need to do is either manually type um, or replacing the text for each one of these items here, or simply you can just select in the top left of the applicable field, your desired format for that field as well. So at this stage, we have successfully pulled in our users table. What I want to do now is I also want to pull in a separate query for our contact table. Um, and then after that, we can then have all the information that we need to pull upon it. There are, as with many things I'll probably touch on in this video, multiple ways you can go about this, but the, uh, the straightforward way I find, and also it'll help you understand how things are working, is we can simply recycle what we've done here for our user table to get our contact table. Uh, all I'm gonna do is navigate to our source, and I'm just gonna copy out all of this information that you see here, all this simple query we've got. And uh, I'm now gonna to navigate to our query section here. I'm gonna simply right click, go to new query, go to other sources. Obviously you can see we've got all these various sources that we can pull from as well. Go to other sources and I'm then gonna navigate down to blank query. And you'll see it's now created a query for us. Simply gonna do control V to paste that in. And if we were to hit enter now, uh, we would get basically a replica of our users query, but we want to just change this to contact. Uh, or again, if you had another table you wanted to pull, you'd work the same way if you just call reference that query hit enter and you can see it's now pulled through that query or 
that data set for us as well. Uh, and slightly different, oh, it all looks the same. So source, again, the same, what we just now entered. And change type, you can see automatically Power Query has then gone and identified what it believes to be the best format for each of those fields. Uh, again, we're not going to pay too much attention to this at this stage, um, but as mentioned before, you could play around with the different formatting if it was a, a key requirement for you. We're just going to rename, rename our query now, and that can be done either way. You can do it over here in our name uh, field, or you can just simply right click, click the query, select rename, and I'm going to just call that contact and hit enter. So we now have our two queries that we want to merge together. So our next step is going to be having got ump. What I find I do by default is I select the sort of the driving table, should I say? So this is the base table. So in our particular example we're looking at here, um, we have exactly the same number of rows in both of our tables uh, because it's simply a table that was split out. But there could be a scenario where your users table maybe only contain 10 users. Your contact information table then contained many or maybe hundreds of rows. And in a scenario where you only want to pull through the applicable contact information for the people you have in your user table, uh, that is where you want this to be your primary because it's kind of driving everything. So that's why I've selected here first. Having selected that, I'm simply going to go over to Merge Queries. And again, if you're on a different tab, just make sure you're on the Home tab. And then over about halfway across the page, you'll see you've got Merge Queries. But rather than hit that button, we're just going to do the drop down here. And you can see that we have two options available to us. We can either do Merge Queries, in which the merge will happen within this existing user's query, or we can go to the second option, which is merge queries as new. And what I want to do is go for this option because it will then create a third query for us in which the merge has happened. Again, you can, I'll just select that button now. Uh, again, you can, it depends how you want to work, if you want to merge it all in one, but I quite like to break out the steps. So I've still got my separate user and contact queries and I can then just, you know, I have my third one here so you can see how it builds out. So the first thing it's going to have done is pulled our users table through and we can see a preview of that here. And then the next part is it wants us to select our second table that we're going to be merging. And for us, it's quite simple. We haven't got many queries to uh, scroll through, but if you had more, obviously you'd see a longer list here. And all I'm going to do is select this contact uh, option or query, should I say. And we can now see, again, a preview of all that. So it just gives us the first, what, five or four rows that we've got there. Uh, once we've got that, this is where it's really important to obviously have your unique identifier across both queries. For us, it's the user ID. So we just now need to select the user ID from each query, uh, what I've done in the first and also done in the second. And you can see it's been selected because it's been highlighted in each query. And that's allowing the two queries to be connected uh, and obviously uh, for us to be able to pull through the data as required. The join type we then need to select and you can see there's a number of options here. I don't want to digress too much into this and create confusion, but you can see a brief description of which what each of the joins will do. And so for left out of what we've gone for, you can see it says all from first, matching from second. So basically our final query will show all of our results from our first table, but it'll only uh, pull through the matching results. So if this person doesn't exist in this table, so um, let's say uh, Alfonso, if Alfonso doesn't appear in this table, our final query will still have a row for Alfonso, it's just that we won't have any data pulled through for him. If, however, we did a right outer join, so we can see it's pulling everything from the second, but only the matching from the first, then what it's going to do is, is our query is going to basically show us all of our final table, or our final query is going to be all of our second table, and it's only going to then appear, add, the uh, where applicable, the people from the first. Uh, and I think I might have been trying to explain that simply and maybe made that more confusing than it need to be, but hopefully I haven't. <laughs> and more importantly, for this example, if you just select left outer, it will get you started on how it works. So once that's done, we can ignore this funny, fuzzy uh, search options. Uh, just, just gives us the ability to find or to divide, define how accurate we want to be with our mapping, but we'll skip over that for now. Uh, we can see we've got a tick here, so it's all happy things are working. If we then select OK, 
we can see that we are now left or we have new a new query created so we can see merge number one and it's going to very much resemble our users table at this stage so if we go to users you can see we've got these three columns and if i go to the merge you can see that we've also got those same three columns but we've also got this contact field now available which is a table so to now show the information we require from the contact table, we're going to go onto this expand button that you can see at the top right here. Not obviously to be confused with a drop down filter that you'll see on the first three. You can see the, the icon is so, ever so different with the two arrows. I'm just going to select that. And if we wanted to now um, bring through everything that appeared in the contact table, we could do that by having them more ticked. ticked. But I want to start off by just bringing through the email uh, field. So what I'm going to do is deselect all of them, select email, and then I'm going to select OK. And you can see that we've now got our email address available to us. So as we look, cast the eye down this page, you can see we've got Abbott Hansen and we've got Abbott Hansen at iCloud.com. So we can see that they are all aligning and they look as they're expected to. So we have now got our query as desired. If, however, we suddenly decide actually we want more than just the, the email address, what we can do is go back into our uh, settings. Oh, and I've gone to the wrong one. Oh, actually, no, I think we can do it from here. You can see at the moment we've got email just selected. If we also wanted to bring through um, the phone, I'm just now going to select that as well and click OK. If I can hit the OK button. And you can see it's also added the phone number for us as well. Uh, and if you did miss what I just now clicked on, over in our applied steps, you'll see, and it might not show on the screen too well, uh, it says expanded contact, and we can see we've got this little cog in the corner. So if I select that cog, you can see it opens up our options of uh, information to expand. So all you need to do is just make sure the applicable values that you want are selected. Let me just do another one. Let's go on to region, select OK, and you can see how it's now brought region through for us as well. If, however, you change your mind and you don't want region or another one, go back into that cog, deselect region, select OK, and you can see how the formula is updated for you, both at the top here and obviously in the data we have available here as well. One last thing you might want to do before closing this is you can see that at the moment the information is or titled contact.phone or contact.email because it shows you what the table has come from. I'm simply going to just uh, rename both of those. So I'll click, re uh, right click the contact first and just change that to phone. And I'll also do the same for contact email, right click and let's just call that email just so it tidies up ever so. And you can see we've also got that step now created for us as well. And if you weren't aware, you can just navigate back through these steps so you can see the process as it unfolds. I'm happy with everything I've got here now, so I'm just going to simply close and load in the top left hand corner. And you'll see it's now created a number of additional sheets for us, what we'll touch on in a minute. And we've also got our desired output, so called merge one. What we because uh, we did end up with that because we didn't rename it. So let's just go back into merge one. And sorry, I did that a bit quick, didn't I? What we've got there is obviously this is our output and you can see we've got this option on the side here for queries and connections. If that box is not available to you, so if I just cross off of that, simply just go to your data tab and you'll see there's this option here for queries and connections. Uh, once we've got this open, we can, I'm just going to double click on merge one to go into the power query edit for merge one. And let's just rename this. So we'll call this, uh, I don't know, um, contact details, maybe. Yep. And we'd need to make sure we do close and apply or close and load. If we did just cross off of that, it wouldn't save our changes. And you can see it's changed the data set there, but it hasn't obviously changed our sheet name. So what I want to do here is let's just uh, delete that and also demonstrate something else at the same time. So you can see we don't want that. We don't need contact. So it's, what it's done is it's created a sheet for every query that we have. Uh, and we don't need to save that and we don't need to do users as well, okay? We just need to keep obviously our source, user, and contact table. So if we now to go and do a new sheet, and I'm just gonna select the top left there. So all we then need to do is if we go to contact details in our queries over the side here, we'll hit right click. We'll then go down to where is it, load to. And I want to store it into a table. And I want to then, uh, yeah, so you can see it's already then selected our existing worksheet. You could go into a new workbook, but I'm quite happy for it to go there. And I'm going to select OK. 
and you can see it's now pulled that field through uh, oh, the field. So it's called, pulled through that data um, set for us as desired. And obviously we can then rename this now for to output maybe or whatever desired name you have. And there we go, we've got our desired output. The real benefit obviously of this is should any of the information in our source table change, it will reflect in here. So let's say Abbott Hansen at iCloud.com. Let's see if we can find Abbott Hansen. So Abbott Hansen is E1083. So let's go to uh, 1083. And let's change this to, I don't know, uh, rather than our club, we go new email, just so it hopefully stands out on the page to us. And we'll just remove that uh, filter I've got on the table. If I now go to output, we can see we've got this old email here. Simply going to right click, refresh, and you can see it's now updated to abbotthanson at newemail.com. So I hope you enjoyed that video and you found it useful. Maybe this was something you were searching for and needed a solution, or this is now a new feature that you previously weren't aware of. Apologies, as I think the video has gone on a bit longer than I intended, but I hope it was only more valuable uh, and obviously a bit more detail to help you through this process. If you did enjoy the video, please do give the video a like. Uh, it's not only greatly appreciated by me, but obviously helps that all important YouTube algorithm and ensure uh, more people are able to find such videos as this one. If this is your first time checking out the channel uh, or you've seen our videos before and you haven't yet subscribed, please could you also do me one last favour and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button. That way you will also be uh, notified as soon as new videos of ours come out onto the channel. So once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.